Ladies, gentlemen, Speakerhead Squad, what is going on? It is your boy, Speakerhead, and welcome back to another video. When it comes to the mini bots from the original G1 series, they all stood out in their own ways. But there was always one mini bot that always stood out to me. Not just because of his colors, but also because of his mellow hippie personality. And that mini bot is going to be Beachcomber. Beachcomber was always one of my personal favorite mini bots, so when New Age released their version of him, I picked him up right away. So today we're going to be taking a look at New Age Beachcomber. Intro time! Before we get into this video, if you enjoy any of this sort of content, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Also, friendly reminder that one like equals one pat for my little buddy Doug here. Say hi, Doug. Also, if you enjoy any of the music in this video or just want to support the channel in general, it's all part of my royalty-free music label, Speaker Ed Studios. All the music on this label is completely royalty-free, so go ahead and use it for any of your content creating needs. Finally, I want to mention if you ever want to catch me live, I do stream over at Speaker Ed Live on YouTube. But now that we got all that out of the way, let's get into the review. And like we start all reviews, we're going to talk about accessories. So this guy only has one accessory and it's going to be a signature blaster. And it has no paint on it, but it is sculpted nicely. So now that we got that accessory out of the way, let's move on to the actual figure. And to start off, let's talk about his sculpt. Now when it comes to the sculpt, it's a pretty good representation of Beachcomber for the size. But starting with the head, New Age did a great job on the sculpt, especially on the face. I'm glad they gave him a smiling face instead of a stoic face because it fits the character much better. Talking about the arms, there's not much to say, but I do like the little tiny bumps that they have on the lower arms. That's a nice little detail they added. Now talking about the chest, I think it looks fantastic. I think New Age really nailed the sculpt on this chest. I know it isn't anything crazy, but I think they did a great job. Talking about the waist and upper legs, there really isn't that much detail here, but I do like the little indents on the crotch plate. Then finally, moving on to the lower legs and feet, once again, not much detail here, but overall it looks nice and clean. Now when it comes to the sculpt of this guy, there is two things that I do want to bring up. For starters, I do think he is really thin. I don't know if there was a way that they could have actually made him a little bit more thick, but to me, he just seems like a really thin figure. And I've also noticed that he's more prone to tip over than most of my other figures. So that's something to keep note of. And the second thing I want to mention, and it's pretty obvious, is that his back is not very clean. The backpack itself isn't an issue, but everything below that starts to become a problem. For starters, you can see the really obvious mushroom peg that connects the waist to the upper torso. And I personally think that looks really sloppy, even though the backpack does cover it up for the most part. Another thing I'm not a huge fan of is how the frame for alt mode folds up into the legs. I will admit it is kind of difficult to find a spot to fold that stuff into on such a small figure, but I feel like they could have done a little bit better. But if you're just looking at this figure from the front, he does look pretty good. And then finally, here's a quick 360 of him, and once again, you can kind of see how thin he looks. But now that we're done talking about the sculpt of this beachcomber, let's move on to the paint job. So to start off, all the whites on this figure are not going to be painted, they are just going to be plastic. But all the blues you see on this figure is going to be painted. So starting with the head, it's that nice blue paint job I already talked about. Then it has a great shiny silver paint job for the visor. It looks great and really stands out from the figure. Moving on to the arms, the only paint that's going to be on there is that blue that we talked about earlier. Moving on to his chest, he has that nice silver painted in the upper part. Then he has those great looking yellow, red, and blue details in his lower chest. And just like the silvers, it really makes it stand out from the rest of the figure. Moving down to the waist and upper legs, there's not going to be any sort of paint. Then finally, moving down to the legs and feet, there's going to be that nice blue paint. And then there's going to be silver for the headlights. But when it comes to the paint job of this guy, he's not painted head to toe, but I think that's alright. I don't think a figure of this size needs to be painted head to toe in every single spot, as long as the plastics look good. And the white plastic that New Age uses always looks great. And it really blends well with the paints they use. Now that we're done talking about the paint job of this figure, let's move on to articulation. So starting with his head, it's only able to swivel left and right and has no sort of up or down articulation. Moving to the arms now, they can go all the way out to the side and go all the way around with no issue. Moving down on the arms, it has a bicep swivel and an elbow bend that can get it more than 90 degrees. Moving to his waist, he does have a slight ab crunch and a waist swivel. Talking about his legs now, they can go all the way out to the side, all the way forward, and all the way back. Moving down to his knees, they're able to slightly get more than 90 degrees. Finally, moving down to the feet, it doesn't have an ankle tilt up or down, but it does have a side tilt. So the articulation on this guy isn't the greatest, but you can definitely get him into some good poses. Now that we're all done talking about posability, let's move on to the transformation of this guy. And this beachcomber is very easy to transform. This guy, just like a lot of their other smaller bots, such as Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper, have a really easy and quick transformation. Yes, it definitely has more steps than the original G1 toy, but that's expected with these guys. But it's definitely not complicated and you won't have any sort of issues with it at all.
And like I said, this transformation is really quick, so you can easily just flip this guy back and forth, no problem. But once you're done transforming this guy, you have a cute little buggy alt mode. Now talking about the alt mode, I think they did a pretty good job with this. I will admit Beachcomber's alt mode isn't anything crazy, but I really like what New Age did. For starters, I like the little engine bits they sculpted in the back. I wish they were painted silver, but the fact that they're even there is a nice touch. I also like the little seats that they have sculpted in. They didn't need to do it, but it definitely looks good for the alt mode. And then finally, I love the silver headlights they have. It really just stands out from the rest of the whites and blues on the figure. However, I do wish there was a little yellow painted on the front for extra detail, but it's just a minor nitpick. But overall, New Age did a pretty good job with this alt mode. So now let's talk about my final thoughts for this little beachcomber. Now to be honest with you, considering this is one of New Age's newer releases, I'm kind of disappointed with the amount of articulation it has. It doesn't have any sort of ball joint for the head, which most of their figures do, which is kind of strange. He has a very limited ab crunch, which is due to the sculpt of the figure. And then something else I didn't mention, which I usually don't mention in my videos, is that he has no hand articulation at all. Most figures have a swivel in their hand, but this guy has no hand swivel at all. It's all gonna be in his bicep swivel. And then finally, like I mentioned, his back is pretty messy. Now I know I mentioned a lot of bad things about this guy, but there are a lot of good things about him as well. I think New Age absolutely nailed the sculpt of this guy, he is an excellent looking beachcomber. And then on top of that, New Age does a fantastic job with their paint jobs, and this is no exception. And then finally, he really is a fun figure to transform and mess around with. I have a blast posing in this guy, and because he's such a passive guy, I like putting him in really chill poses. So when it comes to my recommendation, if you're looking for a legend scale beachcomber, this guy definitely is a great choice. He's definitely a lot easier to get than Magic Square's version. However, if there are other characters you need to collect, I recommend putting this guy on the back burner for now. He's definitely a great little figure, but if you're not dying to have a beachcomber in your collection and you need other characters, I definitely wait to pick this guy up. But overall, that's going to be my review on this little beachcomber. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you already have him or if you plan on picking him up. But if you guys enjoyed this review, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Once again, friendly reminder that one like equals one pet for my little buddy Doug here. Finally, once again, if you enjoyed any of the music in this video or just want to support the channel in general, it's all part of my royalty-free music label, Speaker Ed Studios. Link in description. But that's going to be it for me. I appreciate everyone for checking out the video, and I'll catch all y'all in the next one. Peace.